In this video, I'm going to show you how to get MCP up and running on version 4.2. I'm not going to get super deep into the protocol here, just enough to get you started, and then I'll talk a little bit more, a uh, high, higher level about how we think about MCP, how we think about Agentic AI, and how that applies to data, industrial data ops, in this case, high byte, uh, the product. So the first thing you'll want to do is I've got uh, running in, uh, I'm running 4.2 in Docker. If you look at ports, there's a new port. You need to make sure that you expose 45345 as the default. If you look at our guide, that'll be, and, and include the steps there when you launch Docker, you'll get that by default, but that's doc, Docker specific. Uh, once you're up and running, what you'll want to do is go under settings, and then down here where it says REST data server, you'll want to turn this on. It's off by default. And then down farther, you'll want to turn on the MCP server. Uh, so once that's on, it, it'll be on uh, this port, and I've already had that had that running. So next, we'll want to be able to go to create tooling. But before we do that, let's uh, let's connect a client. And I'm not going to use the most exciting client here, but I'm going to use one that you probably should be using if you're playing with this technology called MCP Inspector. So if you go to the Model Context Protocol website, you can find it under Inspector. I'm not going to go into how to get NPX up and running on your system. It, it should be um, OS specific, but you should be able to get there. Uh, and what you'll want to do is copy this command. And what I'm going to do is put that in here. In MCP Inspector, it's kept up to the latest version of the standard. It's kind of the status quo in terms of connecting and validating an MCP server. So you'll see this is up and running. We'll want to connect to uh, the port that it's on. One really important addition is they added a proxy setting. So when you, if you go back in there where we launched it, this proxy auth token, you're going to want, this, this is unique per run every time you run it, and you'll want to copy that and you'll want to get this done early or else you forget. So if you go under configuration, you want that proxy token there. Um, and then in terms of connecting to Hybyte, what we'll do is this is running localhost, 45345 is that port, and then dash MCP is our endpoint for MCP. We, in the beta, we supported SSE, uh, server-side events. So that is now deprecated by the, st by the spec, and streamable HTTP is the new way forward, so that's what we support today. Uh, so you'll want to select streamable HTTP. Under authentication, what you'll want to do is uh, you'll want to go in, we assign authentication to a user. So you'll want to go under users. In this case, we'll just do this under administrator real quick. You'll probably want to create a unique user. Uh, I'm just going to delete this key. We'll create a new key under administrator. I'll call it MCP in this case. And you'll want to copy this out. This is a one-time uh, copy. So we'll copy that out. And then inside of MCP inspector, you'll want to use bearer auth authorization. Uh, so you're just going to copy that token here and they'll put the bearer in front of it. Um, and then we'll close this and then we'll connect. And this should work. So now we're connected. If we list tools, I already have some tools. We'll go look at that. But this just validates once you see connected, it means we're connected and authenticated with the MCP server. So inside of Hybyte, when you want to create tooling, so tooling is uh, a result of pipeline stay. In the future, we'll probably have standard out-of-the-box tools that you can enable and expose for connections or for configuration or even troubleshooting. But today, in 4.2, you create pipelines. So in here, I've got two. And, and the one we'll focus on is I just I, I made one called Get Current Weather. So you want an API trigger on the front of this. So if you go here, you'll see API triggers. That just means it's exposed via the REST data server and to MCP today. You want to make sure that's enabled. You'll define any parameter inputs uh, that this tool um, exposes, in this case, city. I want a city. I want to, I'll return the weather data for a certain city. And then in here, you'll put a description. Now, it's really important. This description is what the LLM gets in terms of context. So you want to put something in here that's fairly relevant, name it something that makes sense to the LLM or to a human, and then you know provide instructions in here on, on description of how to use the tool or when to use the tool. Um, and then the input parameters. And then in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just going off and calling a weather API and passing in the city as a parameter, uh, and it returns the value. So once that's in there and we've enabled that trigger, you know, we can list tools. We'll see that that's listed as a tool. Uh, we'll, we'll type uh, London. And over here, we can actually exercise the tool inside of um, MCP Inspector. Now, there's no LLM in this loop, right? So it's not going to infer anything based on the result. It's just going to show you literally what was sent and what was returned. You can see the weather. This is the current weather for, for London um, that we're returning. Now, so that's the gist. Once you got there, you're up and running. You can start adding more tools, more pipelines. You can change, you know, the configuration of the pipelines, input parameters, what the pipeline's doing to connect to different industrial assets. Um, one really important part, so, so when you start to think about MCP in terms of 
the factory in terms of data ops, there's a few things. If you stretch this out into the future, you're probably not going to want to manage dozens of MCP servers inside your factory. Granted, you know, every vendor is going to add this, you're going to have it, but that's probably going to be a challenge. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. LLMs have a limited context window. This isn't often published, but if you have a, even an MCP server that exposes, say, 100 tools, you're probably pretty close to filling the context of that window. If, if you're not filling the context of the window, the LLM is going to have a really hard time based on a prompt or some instructions figuring out what tools to call. So you really want to scope tools per LLMs and agents. What we see is that ultimately agents are going to get smaller. They're going to be focused on smaller tasks. So uh, what you'll see because of that, you'll see large tool sets, but like only a slice of those tool sets are provided to individual agents. So I want to show you quickly how, how you solve that in HiByte. If you know, we could have exposed many tools, but specific agents only want access from a security standpoint and just from an efficiency standpoint to certain tool sets. Uh, so to do that, what I'm going to do is rather than connect to the administrative user, I've created a different user called Weather MCP. And in here, what I've done is uh, I've given the default roles and then I've added a claim that contains tags. So this, this user only has access to anything tagged Weather MCP. And if you're not familiar with tagging, that's just a way uh, to tag resources. I've gone and created that tag over here and then I'm referencing it inside of this user's permissions. I've then gone and created an MCP key just for this user, right? And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is copy that out. Uh, I've already I've copied that in Notepad. You can't see it to the left here. And inside of pipelines, uh, you can see in here I have some other tool that I exposed that I really don't want this agent to be able to access to. So I'm going to paste in the token for the specific user. I'm going to reconnect, clear all this out, list tools. And now you can see the only tool that's getting returned is the get current weather. That's the only tool this agent needs. And I've restricted that in high byte. The way I've done that is I've actually tagged this with the weather MCP. So I'm using tagging to restrict the tool set that different agents have access to. I think that's really important. Uh, the other thing I think is really important is the specificity of your tools. I think um, for reading, browsing, you can support pretty generic tools, but if you start to play more with LLMs and Agentic AI, the more focused you can make their tooling, especially when they're tasked with specific outcomes, uh, the better their results, the less tokens you burn on the if you're paying per token on the LLM side, the more efficient and accurate they get. So you know, we kind of see this world where data ops, industrial data ops, is going to manage the context and a lot of this tooling and then control what agents have access to what tools, be able to audit how those tools are used uh, over time and be able to control that at that layer. And then what you'll see is a proliferation of agent platforms and many agents using many different LLMs and trying to manage that access to specific tool sets. Um, I know that's a lot, but we'll probably get more into it. But what's important is you can quickly enable and create your own tools with varying degrees of specificity, uh, depending on what you want. And then you can restrict access of what agents have access to that tool using these, um, the bearer token off today. One of the criticisms of MCP is you should be able to pass in, you know, if I'm a user prompting uh, an LLM that has access to tooling through an agent, those credentials of that user should pass through MCP. I think it's eventually going to adopt that, uh, but it isn't there today. So you need some some way to gate and control that. Right now, you know, data ops platform, just kind of how I showed you, is one way to do that. Uh, but a lot more content coming on MCP, how to use it, how to think about it, how to think about industrial AI agents and reference to data ops. Uh, so stay tuned.